Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to explain how to configure Lambda functions with static IP address. Now before we start configuring this, let's try to understand why we need a Lambda function with static IP address. Well, there is a very common scenario when you have to provide a static IP to whitelist from the external systems. Let's assume that you are running your application out of Lambda functions and you want to integrate your application with external systems. Most likely they will need a static IP address or a list of IP addresses which they can whitelist from their system so that you can get access to that particular application and you can proceed with your integration. So that's where it becomes really important that your Lambda function always preserve a static IP address. Before we start working on this, let's try to understand the architecture behind Lambda function configuration. Let's first try to understand the default configuration. So here you have one AWS account with a VPC and the VPC has public subnet and a private subnet and you are running Amazon RDS database in a private subnet. And then you deploy a Lambda function which is basically your serverless application. By default, if you deploy Lambda function without making any VPC or network related configuration, it gets deployed into AWS managed Lambda service VPC. Now this is not your default VPC or this is not your custom VPC. This is fully AWS managed secure Lambda service VPC. Although you can see that your Lambda function is deployed in your AWS account, but it is not deployed in your VPC. Now let's assume that your Lambda function has to access the RDS database. In this case, the Lambda function will make a call to RDS, but since this is deployed into AWS managed Lambda service v VPC, the call will go to the internet and it will hit this public endpoint URL of RDS, which is called rds.amazonaws.com. And from there, it goes into your VPC and then access your RDS. Now this is similar for any other use case as well. Even if you have some EC2 instances running in your VPC and you try to use Lambda function to list all the instance IDs, for example, it is not going to make a call directly to your EC2 instances. It will always goes out to the internet and from there comes into your VPC. Now in case of custom configuration, again you have AWS, you have VPC, you have public subnet and the private subnet, but now you have your Lambda sitting inside the private subnet. What it means, if you try to access RDS, it's going to access right here using the private network. The request will not go out to the public internet and then comes back. Now the question is, if you have to access internet using your Lambda, then how you can do that? Well, that's where you have to set up a NAT gateway in the public subnet. And the request from the Lambda function will go to the NAT gateway and the NAT gateway will route it to the internet. Now this is very much applicable if you have to access your external system or external application. The request from your Lambda function will go to the NAT gateway first and then it will reach to external system. And the IP address of the NAT gateway will be whitelisted from the target system. And this IP address which is assigned to NAT gateway, this is always going to be static because it is the elastic IP address which AWS associates with your NAT gateway. So this way you can whitelist the IP address of, of the NAT gateway from your external application and then you can successfully integrate your Lambda function with external systems. Now let's configure a custom VPC with NAT gateway and then configure Lambda functions. So I'm using AWS Cloud Development Kit, which is also called CDK in short, to configure a VPC in AWS. So this is my VPC CIDR block range and I'm going to configure this VPC with two availability zones. And then this is the way you can define your public AZ and your private AZ. And here you can define how many NAT gateways that you want in your VPC. 
So CDK is a very convenient tool to provision infrastructure in AWS. So once you define your code, all you need to do is, the first thing is to synthesize the CDK template. When you run CDK synthesis command, it will actually transform this Python code into CloudFormation template, as you can see here. So out of these like 15, 20 lines of code, it has generated this entire CDK or CloudFormation template. Now, next thing we need to do is to deploy this template to AWS account. So I'm going to use CDK deploy and the stack name is VPC. And then if you have multiple profiles, you can select appropriate profile to deploy your stack to that particular account. If you want to know more about CDK, then you can take a look at the description of this video. I have provided a link to my Udemy course with coupon code embedded into the URL itself. You can avail that course for $12.99 and that is going to be stay there forever. This is going to deploy VPC and its components like Internet Gateway, NAT Gateway, Public and Private Availability Zones, configure appropriate routing tables. So everything basically done by CDK itself. We just have to define this thing here and it will transform to CloudFormation template and provision it using CloudFormation service as well. So I'm going to pause this video here and I'll be back once the deployment will be completed. So now the deployment has been completed for VPC stack. Let's get back to AWS console and configure rest of the stuff. So this is my VPC stack which got deployed as part of CDK deploy command. And if you click here, you can see there are a bunch of resources which got created by itself. And this is the IP address of the NAT gateway which has been created as part of this deployment. And if you go to VPC, you can see now we have one additional VPC. The first one is the default VPC and the second one is which I created just now. And if you go to subnets, so you can see we have four subnets here, two public subnets and two private subnets. And we have two AZs, US East 1A and US East 1B. And if you go to NAT gateway, you can see we have one NAT gateway here. And this is the elastic IP address. Going to the route tables. And if you look at the private route table, let's pick this one and click on the routes, you can see that the default traffic is going through the NAT gateway. And for the public subnets, it's going through internet gateway. So I have two Lambda functions already configured, get IP address one and get IP address two. Both of these are similar and both of these are defined with all the default configurations. You can see there is no configuration right now with respect to VPC. So it is totally deployed using the default configuration. And if you look at the code, it is just making a call to HTTP bin.org and it is fetching the source IP address. So this website looks like this. And if you can see here, it is showing the source IP address of my ISP. Similarly, it's gonna show the IP address of the Lambda function. Now it's going to be the public IP address. And if you click on here and run this Lambda function, you can see this get IP address one Lambda function has the public IP address, which starts with 3.210 and ends with .168. And if you go to the second Lambda function and execute it, and you can see the IP address is 3.226 and ends with .185. So both of these Lambda functions are similar and both are configured using default configuration. And when you run both, you can see they both have the different IP address. So now let's configure this Lambda function inside the VPC that we just created. Before we do that, we have to go to permissions and click on the IAM role attached with the Lambda function. Click on attach policies. And from here, select the VPC, Lambda VPC access execution role. So once you do that, go back to your Lambda function and then go to the VPC section, click on edit. 
select custom VPC and then select the VPC that you deployed just now. In the subnets, you have to select the private subnets. So we have two private subnets and I'm going to select both of them. So for the security group, I have created a security group called Lambda-SG. And if I take you to this VPC and under security groups and select Lambda-SG. So this is a pretty basic security group. We have not defined any inbound rules here. And under the outbound rules, I'm allowing all the traffic. This is a pretty simple basic security group that you need. The security group is required because it creates ENI inside the VPC when you configure this thing with the Lambda function. So if you don't have a security group, just define a very simple plain security group. You don't need to define any inbound rules. And select that security group. And click on save. So now it's updating the function get IP address one. In the meantime, I'm going to configure my second Lambda function as well in a similar way. Go to permissions and if you have a different role, then you have to select that role as well and assign the policy. So I'm going to configure this function in the same VPC using same settings which I did for the previous Lambda function. Again, select your private subnets, select the security group, and click on save. Now it's going to take a while to finish updating the Lambda function. What's happening behind the scenes is it's creating ENI for these Lambda functions. Now if you go to EC2 service and click on your network interfaces, so you can see here, these are the new network interfaces which has been created for the Lambda function. So these two are for the Lambda functions. And this one, the fourth one, which is being shown here is for the NAT gateway, which has been created as part of VPC deployment. So now the Lambda function has been updated. As you can see here, it has been configured inside the VPC and in the private subnets and this is the security group which we have attached with this lambda function. Now let's go ahead and run this thing again. And now you can see the source IP which starts with 35.225.41.11 and if you go to VPC and NAT gateway you can see this is the IP address of your NAT gateway. And let's go to the second lambda function just refresh it once to make sure all the updates have been applied successfully. And click on test. And you can see the result. This is the same IP address which is of your NAT gateway. Now it shows that you can configure multiple Lambda functions inside your VPC and then use private subnets and use NAT gateways. All the Lambda functions will have the same source IP address, which will make it fairly simple to integrate your serverless application with any of the third party systems or external systems. Now in reality, it's not very feasible to have multiple Lambda functions, which you can create manually and then configure them manually as well. That's where you have to use something like serverless framework. And if you can see here, this is the template which I have created for the serverless framework. And you can define multiple functions. You just have to define the definitions here and all the configuration related settings, which includes your subnet IDs, your security group, IAM role, everything will be applied to your all the Lambda functions. If you want to learn more about serverless framework and how to provision infrastructure using CDK, then do check out my online course on AWS CDK. Details are there in the description box and you can get it for $12.99. So thanks again for watching this video and stay tuned for more videos.